So this is our main website. Um, it is called bridgingapps.org. Very simple address for you to remember. And before we go to the part with apps, I just want to show you um, some things on here that might be useful to you. We do have an active blog. Um, we share new things um, probably at least three times a week. Um, and those go on our blog and also to social media, just to give you a little idea um, on what we've been sharing lately. We share a lot about um, apps and things. You can see ways, um, even games. We have a lot of mental health information. This wellness with Brittany, uh, Brittany video series is actually a yoga basics series. So our clients can look at this um, and do learn about yoga at no cost. I mean, this is living on our um, YouTube website. She does a lot of um, accommodate uh, modifications to yoga where, you know, she talks about if you're sitting, how to build up your core strength, if you're using a wheelchair, those kind of things, which are obviously really helpful to someone who may be newly disabled and new to a wheelchair and, you know, wants to learn how to keep up, keep up that strength. So we have lots of great things that we share here, um, lots of tech tools. But the main thing I want you to see for your purposes is when you are at home, at the homepage, if you go to communities, we have several different areas here, educators, seniors, veterans, caregivers, um, families. We try some of this um, information does overlap, but obviously we want people to come to this and find who they are and be able to find all that information they need in that one area. So in seniors, for example, you'll see that we have some app lists. We have a lot of things about learning the basics, um, videos, um, one of our most popular videos on our YouTube channel is how to attach a photo to an email. And that, that particular video was actually made in like 2015, I think. And it's still one of the most popular, it gets the most views every year. So it's the, it's those basic things people want to know. Um, we have some information. This is a telemedicine um, how-to video series um, lesson actually on Udemy that people can do for free. Um, and then lots of other resources and training. These are all health and wellness apps. So if you're working with someone and you really, um, you know, want to work on that, um, that mental health aspect of how, you know, maybe you need to get out of the house every day and you want to learn how to track your steps with Google Fit. All of these are two to three minute videos on these different apps that you can see the logos for over here. So it's things for fun, uh, mental health. If you have are interested in meditation. Plum Village is an amazing app. It's completely free and it's um, actually done by monks and nuns in, um, in a monastery. So it's really neat. They teach you all the basics and then they will remind you using notifications on your phone and those kind of things. So just to give you an example of all the different kinds of um, resources we have here, but I want to go up to the app list and I'm actually going to show you a couple of ways to get to it. So if you wanted to look at just our app list for seniors, you could go here. Most of our pages have a specialized list for that group, um, you know, for veterans or whatever. But if you're at the home page, you can go by going to app search and find an app right here. And then also there's a button here that's app search. So either of those will take you to it. And when you go to our app search tool, you're gonna to see, see we have 3,024 apps right now. This is live, it updates on its own. And then we have all these curated lists, but I wanna show you, uh, since I just talked about Plum Village, I'll show you that as an example. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of how we break down an app review and, um, and what we tell you about it and why it's a little more useful than just going to the Apple store. There we go. Okay, so anytime you go to an app review, you're going to see up here in the top right, it shows um, how what platform that app is available on. So this one is iPad, iPhone, and Android. It is completely free. Uh, we are adding a new feature where we can put in here if there are in-app purchases, but this one does not have any. It is completely free. It's done by the Center for Applied Ethics, and it's grant supported. Um, if you wanted to, you can go straight from here to download the app, and you can see it takes you to the, either the Apple Play Store, I mean, Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Um, you can share it, you know, with someone. So this is the imp really important part, though. Um, this is our Bridging Apps Review. So this is where someone sits down and really takes that app apart. Um, anytime an app review is done for us, it has to be done by someone who uses that app with a person with a disability. Um, in this case, it was reviewed by someone with anxiety. 
And, um, and what, what we do is we try to give information where we're not trying to sell it to the people. We just want them to know how we used it, who we think it might be helpful for besides who the developer says, and then, um, and give them some kind of thinking out of the box kind of ways. So you can see here, we do like a little basic walkthrough of what each tab means, Plum Village is amazing in that it's actually kind of um, has a lot of uh, material in it. So this is kind of an explanation of where to find things and maybe where to start um, if you are not sure. And um, then we also have a video review for this one. And this video review is actually from the digital tools um, thing that I showed you on the seniors page. So just lots of information for our users. Again, we want to be a shortcut for them. If you were to go to the app store and say, hey, I think I want to start meditating, you know, and you search meditation, you're going to get hundreds of thousands of hits. And then you're kind of back where you started because you don't know what might be work, what might work for you and what won't. And so we can't review every app that's out there. But what we try to do is do a lot of research and find those that might be good for our clients and then review those and give them like a place to start. Maybe Plum Village isn't for you, but after you've tried it, you can always go back here and look at these other meditation apps that we have on our site, you know, and maybe one of those is the best one for you. So, Amy, and then, yep, I go ahead. Quick question um, just came mm -hmm. in, in terms of um, for someone um, with a disability, vision or hearing, how accessible are these descriptions and, um, you know, in terms of searching for these kinds of things? Yep. So our website is, um, is pretty accessible. We, as I said, we are working on rebuilding it. It does work with a screen reader. Um, and that actually is another thing that we do is we work with a lot of web tools where someone could, um, use something like, um, Morphic, which is a free um, tool that you put on your computer if you don't know how to turn on the settings of your computer and you can just highlight it and have it read to you. So all of those kind of tools, um, you know, our, our website fits in with those and works with those. I hope that answers the question. I yep. feel like I talked in circles there, but. Um, oh, <laughs> so, maybe the, the videos that you mentioned, are those um, captioned? Yes, we actually, I'm very proud of that because I do a lot of our captioning. Um, we actually uh, make sure we go back and hand caption everything and make sure that it uh, makes sense because, wow, that uh, that automatic captioning is not good. <laughs> um, so, yes, everything, any on our website, on our YouTube page will be hand captioned. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. And so that's just an idea. So if you're working with someone, um, let's go back here to the back get you the very beginning of the app search tool. So if you're working with someone and you maybe want to learn about medication management or scheduling, um, one of the apps that I showed you on here, uh, let's talk about Genius Scan. That's a big one. I have, I can't, I could probably um, describe Genius Scan and present it and teach you all how to do it in my sleep. That's how many times we share this one. <laughs> um, so you can look up scanning, you can just search by scanning, or if you know the name of an app, you can just search by that name. Um, this one also has, yeah, this one actually has some videos from the developer. Um, so let's see, you can also go to app list and you can see all these different app lists we've created. And so we have, if you want to search within app list, you can search um, older adults. And it'll bring up, um, you know, lists that we've actually made for that. So we have several. These are the same ones that are, um, some of these are the same ones that are on the seniors page um, where we try to do a lot of like separating them out for recreation, cognition. Um, we do a lot of reviews of like brain games and things like that to keep your, um, keep you sharp. Um, these are the top five. These are all just, you know, different categories. So lots of mental health things, low vision. We, um, we actually do on all of our reviews, we make a note in there if they are compatible with voiceover and talk back um, on iOS and Android. Um, but we are actually building that into the new website as we refresh it. There will actually be like a little place where you can mark. I want to see, you know, apps that are available, that are compatible with voiceover, because unfortunately, even though a lot of them say that they don't work very well with it. And it's kind of clunky. If anybody's ever used voiceover, um, it's, it's just clunky if you're, um, you know, if it's not synced well with the app. So, um, 
again, same thing. You can look for different disabilities. Um, we do a lot for autism and we have those, some of those separated out by school age. And then, you know, so we have students, we have adults with autism. Um, and these are all going to be a mixed kind of category, just different things we've seen to help. Um, we do a lot with training on Uber, you know, how do you get a ride when you're, when you feel like your loved one is, you know, capable of doing that, then we do a lot of teaching them um, how to use that safely, money, skills, all those kind of things. So you can really search for whatever you want to, um, and we probably have something about it <laughs> um, or something exact, really close to what you're looking for. And I want to give some time for questions. This is kind of, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to make sure I share with you. Um, that's pretty much the basics of the website. I do want people to have time to kind of um, ask if there's anything else. I see that there are several little blurbs here on the chat or any of these questions for me. Um, oh. Let's see, I, I, I asked the one about the videos mm -hmm. and captioning and, um, and folks, okay. if put your hand up or put your um, chat uh, question in the box, but we, I have been getting a lot of questions lately about mental health apps and mm -hmm. can you, uh, do you have any that you'd recommend? And how is it typically that some of the best ones work? If you could say anything about mental health apps, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, we've actually, um, we've been working with um, a group from um, one of the medical schools at Harvard. Um, there's a professor there, a psychologist there who um, has developed um, a website where he goes through and looks at kind of the, um, the, mental health, mental health apps in particular, and how to decide if a, an app is good or not. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot that are really being advertised that don't have, um, that aren't vetted in the way that, um, I'm not saying this right, they are not, um, <laughs> they're not managed or overseen by any kind of agency. So if I say I want to create a mental health app, I don't have to be a psychologist. I don't have to have any medical background. There's kind of a loophole for mental health apps. Um, and so what we um, try to do is to talk about those privacy policies and things like that. A lot of the mental health apps, and I'll just show you this list, kind of give you an idea. Um, Obviously, some of these are going to be um, just regular health apps, too, because you can schedule therapy appointments on ZocDoc, um, Doctor on Demand. But a lot of these work like a journal. Um, there are lots that are, let's find one that's a good journal. Um, I think Youper is probably a good example. So um, Youper is one where every day it asks you a question. It's like you're... you're chatting with a chat bot. So a lot of them have that format now where you will have a chat bot and, you know, you fill in all this information to begin with. And every day it's going to ask you a question about that. Like if you, you know, you set a goal or you're talking about your level of anxiety, um, you know, then it's going to ask you questions and then it makes a little chart over time. So several of them are, are that kind of format. There are several that are journaling kind of things. And then I feel like the ones that we get the most questions about and that are the most popular, and I'm not sure if this one's on this list, but I'm going to show you one um, kind of like I talked about um, Plum Village. This is one that's really, let me go back to the main page and show you this. Um, there are two of them, actually. I'm going to show you this one first. So we get a lot of interest in apps like this, where it's actually um, not, you know, people don't think of it as a mental health app, but they, they know that yoga is something that can be good for their mental health. So if someone, um, especially an older person, maybe is talking to you about, you know, their mental health, then maybe they don't have the words for it, or they're not really sure what they need. Maybe they're resistant to, um, to trying an app. Then we might try something like this, where it's either the meditation app or the yoga down dog. And we talk about, um, you know, how you can learn these basic things. We kind of, you know, talk about in there how, um, how yoga can be helpful. And then this one has, um, really neat little, um, videos and instructions with it. It's just a really easy to use one. It's completely free. So Move Light is another one that um, 
you know, when we share these kind, we seem to get more kind of interest like, oh, I might not really be ready to tackle this thing that I don't really understand about my mental health, but I do know that people have told me that moving more is going to help me. And so when we share something like that, um, we know it's connected, but there may, may be more likely to, um, to try it. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm not a psychologist, but this is what we seem to see um, is that people are like, oh, well, I don't, I can't really talk about this. I don't want to chat with a therapist about how I'm feeling, but, but I do understand that, that my activity level is connected to that. And so things like this, again, this is another free one. Um, This one actually um, is specifically um, talks about people with different um, physical Um, limitations. And so it's really good. It's um, talks about having chronic pain and maybe you're never, you know, you've never done any exercise and this is a good one to start with. Um, It just is different in that it's not one of those that assumes we're all the perfect size and perfect um, activity level, you know, and it kind of accepts that people are human and people may not be able to, you know, have a certain range of motion or whatever. So this is another good one. So a lot of times for mental health, that's where we start. Um, And then we also share a lot with the journaling apps and you can look um, at any time um, just on the main page of our website. If you start here, wanted to make sure I wasn't in the list and you do journaling um, you should get, so Dalio is one, that's a really good one, gratitude, um, there are several that have come out, and so anytime, any of these on our website are ones that we, um, like, that we think are good quality, some of them have not been reviewed yet, this notes motivation, you see there's a heart here, um, that means we, we like it, but we haven't had a chance to review it, whereas versus Youper, um, it has a green check mark, so we've reviewed that one already, and the same thing for Dalio. Dalio actually has a video review with it also. We've got a couple so, of questions coming in here. Yeah, sure. um, mm-hmm. How do you find the apps you decide to review and how do you manage requests from developers to review their apps? Um, so <laughs> that's, I'm really glad you asked. So a lot of the time the apps, we do a lot of um, just kind of digging through, paying attention to what's new. Um, You know, we do a lot of searches sometimes. um, I mean, I'm a former special education teacher. Um, I have a lot of interest in education and autism and, um, you know, things that affect my own children also. So I keep my eyes open for those kind of apps. And we all kind of do that with our specialty. Um, We do have developers contact us and we if they contact us and ask us to review the app and put it on their website, on our website, then we um, we don't take any money from them. They're not allowed to buy a review. Um, if it is a paid app, then we will ask them for a code so that we can download it for free. Um, but we make sure that they know up front that that does not guarantee, you know, that it's going to be a good review. We tell them that we're very honest. And actually, most developers appreciate that. Um, we have a lot of developers who our relationship started out as, hey, I've heard about your website. Could you review this for me? And I'd like to have it on your website. And it's ended up being a we're coming out with this new app. Can we send you a code so you can try it while it's still in beta testing? So most of them appreciate our um, our expertise because we do work with so many different people with disabilities. For those of you that don't know, and I should have said to begin with, Easter Seals works with um, all disabilities. In fact, you don't even have to say you have a disability. You don't have to prove it to us. Um, cradle to grave. So, you know, we, we have um, a range of experience that a lot of organizations don't have because of that. Um, and so they really appreciate, you know, our input and we will say like, this was really hard to use, or this part of it was really um, clunky, or guess what? Caregivers don't want to spend two hours setting up their information in an app when they don't even know yet if it's going to work. Can you make this process more streamlined? So we do a lot of um, just really honest reviews. And if they don't like it, you know, then fine. We don't review, we don't put your app on the website or we'll leave it on there and say, you know, this wasn't our favorite, um, but it may work for some people. So um, yeah, we just, we're really um, fortunate that we don't have to depend on that monetary, you know, input because we are grant supported. So yeah, we're really honest with them about that. We love when professionals who work with people 
you know, email us or call us and say, hey, we use this app all the time with this group of people and it works great because it's impossible for us to keep up with everything new. So we depend on other professionals to say to us, you know, maybe you should review this for transition age students or for older adults or whatever the case may be. Um, another question, um, do you have reviews of apps for users whose primary language is not English? Yes, and I was actually about to say, um, so if you look right up here in the top right, um, our, our websites, both of our websites are powered by Google Translate. So we do try to, first of all, before I show you that, we do try to um, put in the um, review what other languages it comes in, if, um, if that's applicable. Um, but you can always um, translate the review here. We have a lot of Spanish speaking people here in Texas, so you can just translate the review um, and it does it automatically. It is Google Translate, it's not perfect, um, but we have tested this with lots of groups um, and sorry, Google Translate's trying to, <laughs> trying to translate for me. Um, and, and they have said that, yes, it's pretty close, you know, uh, with, with groups that are bilingual and, um, you know, that it's pretty reliable. So they're always updating Google Translate. So yes, and our main website, again, is the same way. Um, you can go to it and um, use Google Translate. So see, I chose Spanish on the other one, so it's already translated that to me, I mean, for me. Mm -hmm. I always forget to mention it. I'm glad somebody asked that. And you can see it's more than just Spanish. I mean, here in Texas, we have a lot of Spanish, but we have a lot of every other <laughs> um, language too. I think we have something like a hundred different um, languages represented here in the Houston area, actually. So um, we, we use quite a bit of these. One of the things that we've talked about earlier this spring as a group, the Access and Learning Work Group, is how does someone who is new to assistive technologies figure out the apps that could even be helpful to them? Because that's a big piece of it. Um, like, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't aware that this kind of stuff even exists. Right, right. Um, yeah, we do um, a, a lot of just one on one kind of app matching where we spend time with the person and we talk about um, we talk about um, you know, the, the traditional kind of equipment that's out there. So if you look, we have an assist, our assistive technology lab is more than just our apps. Um, it's not helpful to you because you're so far away and you can't come there in person, but just so people know, we do have a lot of the more expensive equipment. So, you know, we have the big expensive speech devices. We have, um, document cameras that, that take a picture of your, um, document and put it on the computer screen for you and either read it to you or blow it up, you know, really huge, whatever font you need and those kind of things. So we kind of start usually with showing them, hey, these are, this is what technology provides. These are the kind of possibilities out there. And then we will also show them here it is in the app version. Now, maybe you are a desktop computer user and you need every piece of your mail read and it's easier for you to have this mounted document camera that does this for you and puts it on your desktop. You know, maybe that's what works best for you. But if you're not and you just want something that's portable that you can use all the time without all that big equipment and that's also less expensive, then then let's talk about the app version of it. So mainly it's just taking that time to spend spend time with people. Um, you know, and we do that in person and remotely. Um, that, you know, unfortunately people don't realize that it's no cost to them. Um, but that is something we really enjoy doing is just sitting down with a person and saying, hey, you know, what what barrier is in place right now and let's see how we can solve that for you. What about, um, you know, when we're taking a look at sort of the entry level as people are getting into assistive technologies, um, somebody who has some level of hearing impairment, for example, um, do you have recommendations as to where to kind of start in terms of apps for that? Um, yes, and actually for, um, for the for hearing, a lot of times it may not be an app. It may be a smaller device like a, um, um, oh, the name has totally escaped me. Um, I believe it's called a Pro Talker. I think we have our, um, I think we have it here on making life accessible. Um, 
There are, there are some things you can do with apps for captioning and things like that. But a lot of times we do, let's look at this, see if it's under the accessories. We show people things that are kind of like the old FM unit, like a teacher might use um, where it has a microphone and then the person is wearing a headset. Um, there are less um, cumbersome kind of things like that, where it's a, a small little device that has a um, Bluetooth microphone. And so one of the biggest questions we get is like the couple that comes in and says, he can't hear a single thing and the TV, our neighbors can hear it, you know, because they're blasting the TV. So you put that little microphone next to the TV, the person wears their Bluetooth headset and they can hear that they can hear it at their volume that they need without blasting the whole house. Um, so again, those are really kind of personal needs. I was looking to see if we had those on here. I don't think we do. Um, well, here are a few. Um, is there, and so headphones, different kind of headphones and those kind of things. But for the apps, especially if there's like total hearing loss, then we definitely um, talk to them about captioning. You know, how do you use that captioning? How there are now, now apps that actually do what the captioning telephones do. Um, so there's a new one that we're working with. We're working with the developers and it's called Olelo. And I don't even think we have it on our website. I kept asking the guy about his sign up process because I didn't believe that it was this simple, but they download the app when they sign up, they, um, they put in their social security number and their, uh, or their last four digits, sorry, not the whole number, the last four digits. And the company sends that information to the federal government and they are then reimbursed through the telecommunications act. And it is really that simple. He gave us a number that we could use when we we're trying it out. So we don't have to use our real social security numbers. And we signed up within minutes. Um, and what happens is it actually, it's almost like giving you a Google number. It gives you a second number, but then they have directions of how you make it where that number never shows up. You know, your regular phone number shows up and it's exactly like it looks on the screen. It is captioning that entire phone call, like a text message. And that's amazing because before now, people have had to fill out those applications and wait until they got approved. And then they had to use this voucher to go actually get the phones from one of the vendors. And here it's all in this device that you already have in your hands. Um, and so, again, it's completely free. So those kind of things we definitely share with people. This is brand new. Like I had a call with the developer maybe two weeks ago at the most. And so, um, you know, we're still learning about this, but it looks like something that's going to be really useful um, for people with hearing loss. So we're just always, you know, it might not always be an app like it is in that situation. Um, we just try to know everything that's out there and, and give people those options. That was a really long answer to that question. Sorry, but please try Olelo because it looks amazing. I mean, we think it's going to be great. Um, another question. Can you tell us more about uh, train the trainer partnership opportunities uh, you provide? Yeah, so we just do. Um, there's actually here on our website under training. Um, you can kind of read about some of the things that we've done. Um, and all you have to do is email us, email me. I'll actually let me go ahead and put my contact information up while y'all are while we're on here. Um, and um, I, I mean, I would probably be the one that would do um, coordinate that, that um, training, whatever it ends up being. So um, yeah, we just, I mean, we're, like I said, we're really, really, I don't know how many of y'all heard the beginning of that conversation, the end of that conversation, but we're really flexible. Um, you know, we basically do our trainings based on what the people need. So we don't really have any kind of box trainings. I mean, even these slides right here, it's something that I used with another group and kind of pulled it out to give you an idea. Um, but we, we really create the training based on what the people need. So this is my email address. This is my cell phone number. You can call or text me and we can set that up. So we, that's one of our favorite things to do because it really, I mean, we love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. I think I just said that was a favorite thing too. I have a lot of favorites working with people, but um, you know, we know that if we're training groups of people that work with groups of people, then, then that information is spreading. And this is, you know, these are all free. I mean, who wouldn't want to share information about free resources? So we're happy to do that. It's just as simple as contacting me.
That sounds great. Because I know that a lot of the folks on the call um, work with different segments of um, population. And so sometimes it's special, kind of specialized. They say, what can you tell us about? Um, right. Another question just came in. Uh, do you have a password yeah. management app that you recommend yeah. for older adults? Um, oh. Yeah, that, that's a really tough one. I'll be really honest with you. Our team struggles with password management. Um, one of the biggest barriers to people um, getting what they need on their phones is, is the password issue. Um, we have not found a great one that works. Um, honestly, I recommend a lot to people that they have a running note in their actual device and make it a locked note. So sometimes we'll teach people that, um, how to make sure your device is locked and then how to make sure also that note is locked. Um, but there are just, you know, passwords are just becoming such this, this big deal and they're getting more and more complicated and you can't have the same one that you had within the last three months. And it's just, it's way too much for our, our clients with disabilities and, and our older population. So we are constantly looking, but I, I don't have one that I would recommend right now that I think is really great, unfortunately. But I do like mine are all saved in a locked note on my phone. <laughs> I mean, and it's it's updated, you know, it's uploaded to iCloud. So that's that's really the best solution that that I personally have right now. Yeah, that's a, something that comes up at every event, like tech support or any conversation we have. Um, these yeah. password conversation, and I'm really looking forward to the day we can figure this out because it is really a hassle. Yeah, I mean, Face ID has helped a lot, you know, but it's a matter of does the person understand what giving that permission for Face ID means? And if you skip that step, then walking them back through, you know, activating Face ID or fingerprint, whatever the case is, you know, um, that helps a lot because then everything on that device, you know, they can easily get into without having to remember the password. But yes, it's a it's a constant when we work with groups or even individuals, the first thing we say is please make sure you know your passwords because you can't download an app if you don't know your passwords. And a lot of the older adults, their children or grandchildren have set these devices up for them and you know they just don't know. So it's a huge barrier. Yeah, another question. Can you tell us more about the Tech Tools News? So that particular blog is um, actually also what I was just showing you with that article. Okay. So this tech tools, um, we write for, and it's actually for everybody. It's a parenting special needs magazine. So a lot of these are, um, it's all related to parents and caregivers, um, but we write for them every month. And so every, I mean, every two months when a new article, a new issue comes out. And so all of ours are tech tools or tech tips. Um, so some of our blogs maybe name that, but in general, like the tech things, you know, if it says tech tips or something like that, then it's an article. And what we do is each article is themed. And um, you can see this one was about, it's called a healthy summer reset. And so it's about these mental health kind of, um, can you see this part? I know this is yep, a lot of pop-ups. Yep. Is it showing? Okay. Yes. Just want to make sure it was still showing. So this is about, you know, parents and caregivers. It's a big deal when your loved one's schedule changes during the summer. Like I said, I have two teenagers home right now um, and they are typically developing. So when you have a child who needs that really, really structured time and all, all of a sudden school is gone, you know, that causes a lot of stress and things. So that was the theme of this one is that what are these kind of apps that can help um, parents and caregivers. Um, and, you know, they'll, they'll all be different themed. Um, but we do a fun one at Christmas about different gifts and, um, you know, cool apps that might be coming out or devices, you know, whenever a new device is released, we'll talk about it. Um, and we also try to find like little accessories and things like that. Um, Self-care is also a good mental health app, um, you know, to to kind of share with parents and um, what might be good for purchasing for those loved ones. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're I can't believe we uh, just zipped through that hour. There's so many great things. 